Supply chain issues, one of the most talked about phrases over the last year and apparently the reason behind every shortage, whether it was toilet paper, microprocessors, spray foam raw materials, rubber for car tires and of course, wood. Let's rewind to March of 2020 and examine the sequence of events. The global pandemic and subsequent lockdowns caused sawmill lumber dealers to lay off workers and cut production by 30%. Mills also had to limit shift work to comply with social distancing rules. Since remodels and new construction were slow in 2019, owners expected a bigger pullback in 2020. Instead, the housing market had an unexpected boom. Remote working caused people to move out of expensive apartments in cities to houses in the suburbs. Low interest rates for both home mortgages and new construction financing were an added incentive. Homeowners stuck in their homes with nowhere to go took on more DIY projects like porch additions, decks and bathroom remodels. Essentially, we experienced a negative supply shock and a positive demand shock. There were other contributing factors too. We had an extremely active Atlantic hurricane season in 2020, which led to thousands of rebuilds. There were also 57,000 wildfires and 10.3 million acres burned, which cut lumber supply. 20% tariffs on Canadian lumber were imposed in 2017, which could have contributed to the increasing lumber prices. Fortunately, the tariffs were cut to 9% in December of 2020. Another reason is the mountain pine beetle infestation in British Columbia, which has been getting worse since the 1990s. Bloomberg estimates that 15 years of log supplies, enough to build 9 million single-family homes, were destroyed. What's really interesting is that we're still not consuming as much wood as we did in 2005, when consumption hit nearly 65 billion board feet. This tanked during the Great Recession, and over the last 15 years, demand has been slow, so supply decreased to match it. We consumed around 55 billion board feet in 2020, far below the peak of 2005. In any ordinary year, that demand would have been easily met but the lockdown throttled supply. I'm going to say something a little controversial now. In March of 2020, Trump said we can't let the cure be worse than the problem itself. It was an argument against a perpetual lockdown. Now, I'm not trying to promote him. As you all know, I try to stay in the middle, look at things objectively and not be enticed by the extremes. However, I think that that quote was foreshadowing a supply chain issue like this one. We obviously want to protect the people working at the sawmills, but the lockdown has created so many long-term ripple effects. Now let's discuss lumber futures. These are financial contracts that legally bind two parties, the seller and the buyer, to the delivery of lumber at a future date and price. If traders think that the forecast price is too low, they can lock it in by buying a futures contract. On the other hand, traders who think that the forecasted price is too high can lock it in by selling a futures contract. Lumber futures are traded at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, or CME. For standardization purposes, it tracks nominal 2-inch by 4-inch pieces in random lengths from 8 to 20 feet. The lumber must be western spruce, pine or fir, or SPF. The mills must be located in Oregon, Washington, Idaho, Wyoming, Montana, Nevada, California, British Columbia, or Alberta. Apart from the spike in futures in 2018, the price usually averages around $300 per thousand board feet. We saw a short dip in futures at the start of the pandemic, but it's been climbing ever since. Futures are now over $1,200 per thousand board feet, an increase of 275% in one year. Let's look at some actual price increases. A 2 inch by 4 inch by 8 foot pine stud used to cost $2 but now costs $7. A 7 16th inch sheet of OSP used to cost $8 but now costs $42. Pressure treated outdoor 2x4s are up 80%. Decking boards are up 75%. 4x6 and 6x6 pressure treated lumber is up 50%. The average cost of single family homes has increased by $24,000. Redfin found that the average home sale price hit an all time high in March. So, do we see any relief in sight? Well, in order for prices to come down, Shutdowns within the lumber industry will need to end and suppliers will have to operate at full capacity to not only catch up with the backlog of demand, but to also meet the new higher current and future demand. Multifamily and commercial projects have already stalled, but single-family homes are still popular. However, at a certain point, 
builders and new homeowners will eventually be turned away by the sky-high prices and will halt their plans for new builds and renovations. Many builders are now switching from stick framing to ICF builds because their costs are now comparable. ICF buildings also require less heating and cooling equipment, reducing finishing costs of the structure. I'll link my videos on the pros and cons of ICF homes up here. Speculators expect the cost of lumber to level off this year and possibly come down to reasonable levels at the end of the year. Hardwood hasn't been surging the way softwood like southern yellow pine has, so that might become more popular. Steel was becoming attractive alternative to wood until those futures started surging in August of 2020. The US has also been increasing lumber imports from Europe since Canada has been reducing production volumes. In the first 10 months of 2020, the US imported 39% more lumber than it did in 2019. Over the past five years, Austria, Germany and the Czech Republic have harvested nearly 250 million cubic meters of spruce because they were damaged by beetle infestation. This could help fill the gap in supply. I'm concerned about the extreme shortcuts builders might take to keep costs low since their profit margins are shrinking. I've seen the quality of suburban homes decline before the pandemic. I'm worried that we're going to be building disposable homes with short lifespans just to meet the insane demand. I'm also concerned about stick frame builders constructing ICF homes without the necessary knowledge and experience. On a positive note, I hope that this supply chain disruption helps the construction industry realize how wasteful they are. The EPA estimates that 230 to 530 million tons of construction and demolition waste are produced each year in the US. I hope that they start to collect and recycle wood scraps into engineered wood products. I hope that automation and prefab become more popular because they typically reduce timber waste by around 75%. Lastly, I hope that the construction industry now realizes the value of diversification. Lumber is so cheap, well, it was so cheap, because the demand is so high, which leads to increased competition in the market and lower prices compared to other building materials. But we now see the danger of putting all our eggs in one basket and the fragility of our supply chain. I hope we diversify and explore different methods of construction, like hemp blocks, hempcrete or rammed earth. I hope you found this video useful. I'm sure many of you have been affected by these crazy lumber prices. So share your story in the comments below. I'll also link my Patreon page if you can support me and really appreciate it. A big thank you to everyone already supporting me. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. See ya.